In this video, I'm going to introduce you to Simpson's rule, which is another numerical method for approximating the area between a curve and the x-axis. Now, all of the methods that you will have seen so far, either using rectangles, um, either using just base rectangles using the first limits or the upper limits, um, or the mid-ordinate rule, as we've just gone through, or the trapezium rule, they were quite basic shapes um, that you are using to approximate your area under a curve. So it makes sense, well, could we extend this to actually using a curve to approximate the area under a curve? Now, the most basic curve that we can work with is a quadratic curve. And Simpson's rule, what it does is it approximates the area under a curve using a quadratic. So essentially, what you will see is you'll have a curve and that might look something like this, for example. And what we're going to need are three points And then we're going to find the curve, the quadratic curve, that goes through those three points. Now, the reason why you need three points is because for the general form of a quadratic, y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, you have three unknowns. You've got a, b, and c. Now, in order to work out the a, b, and c for the curve that goes through those three points, you need three bits of information. Okay, so I need three points. One, two, three. Okay, so I'm going to call these three points S, T, and U. And I'm going to, for ease of uh, notation, I am going to say that this is at the origin, and this is of width minus H. Well, that's of width H, and this is of width H. Okay, so the same width and they are h either side of the origin, okay? And that makes my calculations easier. So this uh, length here I will refer to as ys, this one as yt, and this one as yu, okay? So that the coordinates of each of these points will be, well, that's 0, y, t, this is h, y, u, and this one, let's write it over here, is minus h, y, s. Okay. Now I'm going to substitute those three points into this function. So let's do uh, this one first. So we would have y, s is equal to, substituting minus h for each of your x's, you would get a h squared, take away b h plus c. Then for this one, you would get y t is equal to, well, with x is 0, you just get y t is c, of course. So that c there, we could replace with y t. And for this one, we would have y u is equal to a h squared plus b h plus c, which we now know is y t. Okay, so we get that point there. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these two equations together. Because what that will do is it will knock out the bh's for me. And I'm going to get two lots of a h squared plus two lots of yt. OK. And I'm going to rearrange this to get the a. So allowing me to write a in terms of the y's and the h. So I'm going to get uh, y s and I'm going to put the two lots of yt in the middle, plus the yu. Oh, I should have a, a equal, shouldn't I? 
a equals this uh, 2h squared. Okay, so this is what I've got so far. Now, what remember what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to approximate the area under my curve using a parabola that goes through those three points. Okay, so I'm going to need to work out the area underneath my parabola. So I need to integrate my function. So this would be equal to uh, 1 third ax cubed plus 1 half bx squared plus cx evaluated between h and minus h. So let's substitute those values in. So I would get 1 third a h cubed plus one half uh, a sorry b h squared b h squared uh, plus c lots of h then take away substitute the minus h minus one third a h cubed plus one half b h squared take away c times h Now, the half bh squared, take away the half bh squared, that's gone. And that's a reason why I didn't try to work out b here, okay? because I'm going to get that cancellation here. So I'm going to be left with 2 thirds ah cubed and 2 lots of ch. Okay. Now, remember, we know what c is. It's yt. So I can replace the C with YT. And I know what A is. It's that. So we've got 2 thirds times this times H cubed. So YS take away 2YT plus YU over 2H squared H cubed plus 2C, oh, not C, YT yt times h. Okay, now you can see that the h squared here and h cubed, so it's going to knock out an h. So I could, um, well, it knocks out the h squared, I'll just have the h left down. And I've got that 2 there, the half is going to knock out that 2 that's there. So I'm going to be left with 1 third h times ys take away 2yt plus yu. And I've got the 2yth. Now, I want to really bring all these together. So what I'll do is I want the h there. That's fine. But I want this to be in terms of 1 third. So let's write this as 1 third h times by what would I need? I would need 6yt. OK, because 1 third times the 6 makes the 2. So now I can factor the 1 third h out. And I've got the ys. I've got minus 2yt plus 6yt. So that's plus 4yt plus the yu. OK. And so now we have the beginnings of our formula because we're saying that this part, this first parabola, can be formed and we can work out the uh, value of it by having one third times the width of the strip times by the heights ys, four lots of the middle one plus yu. Okay? So that's what we've got. So. What we're going to do is we're now going to, well, I'll just take note of that. So one third h y s plus four y t plus y u. Okay, take note of that. And let's erase all of this. Okay, 
Now, I'm going to get rid of that as well. And let's think about this. Okay, so let's say I want to work out the area under this curve. Now, um, there is a bit of a condition that comes with using this, as you will see. Right? If we start here, let's say that's A, and I'm going to use equal widths. So there's one, two, okay. Currently, I can now say, right, I can work out the area um, here between y0, y1, and y2, okay, my three um, y-ordinates, approximating this curve by using a parabola that goes through those three points using this formula, okay? Now, if this extends further, so that's h, that's h, Okay, what I need, I can't now, if I've just add on one extra strip here, I can't now do the same thing again because I need three points. And I can't use this point, this point, and this point, Y3, because that will then have this overlap in the middle. And I'm not going to be able to work out what that is. I can't have these overlaps. So I can't actually do this with three strips. I actually need another strip in order to do it. So there is a condition on Simpson's rule that I need an even number of strips because otherwise I'm going to have a problem. I can't use the formula to do it. So let's go with two more strips. That's H. That's meant to be H. Let's try that again. That's a bit better. Okay, there's Y5 and Y6. So I've got this first one, and that's going to be point B. I've got this first one here, so that my integral between A and B of Y dx will be approximately equal to one third times H times the first one, y0, four lots of the y1, and then uh, one lot of the y2. Okay, that's my first bit. Then I need this second one. So plus one third h, and it will be y2, four lots of y3, and then one lot of y4. And then I've got the last bit, which will be one third h. Uh, we've got the y4, we've got four lots of the y5, and then we've got the y6. So if we bring these all together, you'll notice we've got the one third h in all three. We've got the y0 and the y6, so the first and the last. We've got um, four lots of y1, y3, and y5. And two y2s and two y4s. And so this is Simpson's rule, okay, which... If and it's in your formula booklet as well, where of course, let's get rid of that, where h is given in the regular form, b minus a over n, okay, where n is even, as we've uh, explained. So, um, the integral between a and b of y dx is approximately equal to one third h times by, you've got the first plus the last, okay? Then four lots of the y's with odd order. Like, well, they're odd or ordinates, rather. So the, y, the odd ordinates go in there. So y1 plus y3 
plus, and they're going to use y and minus 1. And then two lots of all the even ones. So y2 plus y4 plus y n minus 2. Dot, dot, dot. Okay, and so that is Simpson's rule, and that's where it comes from.